Hi, everybody. Welcome to Lesson Pick Show and Tell. Hi, Lori. How are you? Good. <laughs> so try number two. Take two. Uh, yeah, it's okay. It's uh, seven o'clock and uh, we're here to show off some uh, goodies that people are making with Lesson Picks. And mm -hmm. uh, we did miss last week. We were out of town. We tried and uh, could not make the uh, remote thing work. So now we're back in the studio. We've got a great guest, uh, Diana Cook. Yeah. And she's going to join us in a minute. She seems awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And all like, you know, like this is nothing, nothing to her. It's all easy going. <laughs> Love that. Right. Not like us. Makes it look easy. Right. I know. And we've got, uh, we've got goodies to show ourselves. We're going to do that after Diana. We've got a, a new template to show. We previewed it, but we're going to actually walk through it today. Yay. And uh, we'll talk about some other new stuff and take any questions you guys have. Uh, you can uh, type questions in the Facebook uh, page, the link and underneath it. I will watch those. And then uh, also, if you want to join the, the Zoom link, that's there as well. We can actually unmute your mic if you'd like to join us and ask a question or two. Uh, you're welcome to do that. But uh, let's get started. And uh, welcome, Diana. Welcome, Diana. All right. So Diana, you want to unmute your uh, mic? Jeez. All right. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thanks for Good. having me. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you're here. It's we're great. We're so grateful you could make it. Absolutely. Short notice, too. <laughs> you, you were, you were great. Uh, popped up. Kind of saved us a little bit. That's what you get when you say you like the show. We come and invite <laughs> you to be on it, right? That's right. That's exactly right. All right. So um, we're going we're gonna to give you the screen. We're going to keep our mic on, but uh, give you the full screen. Hi. Okay. And uh, yeah, let, show, us, show us what you got. Tell us what you're, what you're using Lesson Picks for. We'll... Okay. Uh, It'll give you grief the entire time. That sounds good. All right. Well, I absolutely love lesson picks. It saves me every single day. I can get something done in 10 seconds if I need to. So I just love it. The first thing that I started when lesson picks first came out, and we were so lucky that Montgomery County purchased it for us. Um, the first thing I started was an articulation notebook. So for those of you who don't know what an articulation notebook is, it's a notebook that the kids develop and it's interactive and um, we use it to put their sounds and pictures of their sounds and words in the notebook so that when they come in every day that they can practice. So here's an example of the first page of one of the articulation notebooks um, that we would use in my room. And if you notice right off the top, you can see the different pictures of the spots in your mouth. So when I first teach a sound, the first thing I do is teach what part of your mouth do you use to make that sound. So I present the students with a whole lists of pictures and I it's really nice I do a lot of work up front and cut all of these pictures out and I put them in little tubs on my um, bookshelf and then I can just grab them so I don't have to really prep when I get a new student they're just already there and made and I grab them off my shelf and then we start and make our notebook so when the kids come in they'll have this glued in so it helps me get ready for the day and pull out my attendance and all of those things while they get started and warmed up and I don't have to re-remind them every time they can remind themselves and then they go through each dot they save their sound and then they might have a little task down here or special words that I might write at the bottom that's awesome. Can I, can I take a look at, look at a couple of things there? You've actually modified our symbols for oh, the like different that. positions, right? Yes, I did. did you the marker or did you do it in the uh, symbol builder? Well, I did it in the marker when it first started because you didn't have the symbol builder, but now I would go back and use the symbol builder. Very cool. Because I also saw you had no voice on the other one, right? Yes. And I would definitely be able to do that now that you have the symbol builder. Very good. Look at that. Look at that. So we need to add those pictures to our library yeah, as they well. Can, they They're can add it creative. if they want to. They can. In it's the all meantime. Good. In the meantime. I love the ideas. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember <laughs> when you drew all those pictures of the mouth. So. Yes, that was what I was most excited for. Very <laughs> cool. You and myself. <laughs> it kind of looks like you wouldn't know what it is what a tongue is or <laughs> yes, what was happening. So that was very nice. So um, after the students do their warm up, then I usually have some sort of activity that I've pulled from lesson picks to go in the notebook. So I might have like one of those picture finds or I might have minimal pair cards that match together with the puzzle pieces. Um, or just I might make an individualized word list for a specific student that they actually just glue right in their notebook and then they can turn to that that word list and then practice. I can also use that as a um, way to take data because I can use that word list each time and it's already in their notebook. I don't have to flip through another notebook or hurry up and print something beforehand. I just make sure that I set it up in their notebook and then we get going and it's all right there, which is really nice. That's very cool. So um, 
Do you, do you use our minimal pairs tool to make those or? I have, but only once. So I'm not totally familiar with it. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. But, but you, you know, it's there and you can. Yes. Yes. And then right. I use the sound finder all the time. Gotcha. I'm really gotcha. good at Very that. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Um, and so another tool that I've kind of adapted, um, this is not for cutting. I actually use it for speech. So this was a student that I put in his notebook. He really likes um, soccer. So he practices his smooth speech or a clear sentence using the straight line. And then when they have the up and down line, they have to practice using different intonation. Like, I love soccer. Soccer oh, is very cool. Boat. And then, or we can use this if a student um, is stuttering and we practice being bumpy on purpose. So I, 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 I like soccer. Gotcha. And we could use it that way. So very I actually cool. really like this too, even though I don't use it for cutting. That's all good. We also just uh, made an addition to that. I'll, we'll show you if you haven't seen it. Okay. We added, we added um, big wide versions of those. Wider lines, uh, easier for cutting. When or you for need tracing. To cut in within a quarter inch of a line or yeah. tracing. It might work for what she's doing too. I love it for this speech. Yeah. And then I also use it um, sometimes I co do a co-session with my OT. And if we're doing a specific topic, I may pull my vocabulary and throw it in some of your cutting, um, the other cutting one where you can cut out shapes or this yep. one and then we can yep. combine together. So it has both of our topics on it, which is nice. Very cool. Um, the second thing that I love lesson picks for is adapting books. And I know some people have already talked about that. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I adapt the book for articulation and put it in my notebook too. So um, two weeks ago, we did Dragons Love Tacos and we read that book and the kids love it. So for my articulation, I, I, I use your pictures and I make um, a grid with a hundred different things from Dragons Love Tacos. And then they use that for articulation to race to a hundred. So they want to get a hundred productions because speech pathologists are always trying to get the most productions in a session as they can. Right. And this is one way that I can do that without me being right next to them. So I can give them this and they can use their lesson picks word list and then try to get a hundred productions. And then I use the symbol editor to make them white and then put them on the, on the sheet. So that Very goes cool. too. So, so there are dragons, there's tacos. What are the other two things in there? Um, little jalapeno fire things and yeah, fire and jalapenos. Gotcha. <laughs> I see. I don't, I don't know the story. I'm sure that makes sense. It's very popular right now. I've been seeing a lot of dragons. The dragons can't eat anything spicy, only mild toppings. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> so then I made a dragon and then I made the sentence, dragons love. And then I made specific vocabulary words that start with their sound. So then they had to make a sentence, dragons love writing, dragons love roses. So these guys are working on ours too. Very cool. Very cute. And you said that you actually made them white in the um, in the symbol editor. Yes. So, you know, we also have black and whites of every picture, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's probably what I'm talking about. Oh. All right. <laughs> this wrong lingo, maybe. That's okay. So then um, to add on to the book, I like to do comprehension activities for my students who might need help with receptive language. So after that... Um, the piece where if students weren't working on articulation and they were working on language, I printed out different things that might go on tacos. So I had lettuce, tomato, and cheese, which were the three correct things from the book, a banana, and then a um, jalapeno. So I had a little stuffed dragon with me and I asked the students to make a taco and they used the pictures and they had to pick off the table what they would make their taco out of. <laughs> That's so awesome. a taco. Now, if you didn't have a stuffed dragon, I would say go to the puppets and make a dragon puppet and then there you go. You don't even need to have anything but lesson picks to complete that activity. There you go. She is good. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, okay, and then I'll talk about another one. So the next thing, I was more excited than probably anybody to see the symbol builder because I like to play barrier games. And for years, I've been drawing these terrible renditions of like a snowball in some sort of setting. And I'm definitely not an artist. My husband's a graphic designer, but I try to draw and it just doesn't work. So I use the symbol editor and I can show you to make um, different frogs in different ways so then the students play like a rendition of go fish but i make them play it in a barrier game and they have to ask their friends for different kind of frogs so i would say do you have the frog with red spots or do you have the frog between two turtles Ooh, do you have so a pretty. frog under the umbrella oh, that's so cute that is that's awesome <laughs> do you have the frog with the black 
bow tie. Oh, I know so many people who yeah, love, you're, you're love this. So um, I made all of these different frogs because my next theme is going to be frogs in May. And so we're going to play that game. And I'll just, here's my little plug. I love this. I learned this when I was in grad school. But you take a file folder like this and you yep. cut it in half. Okay. Okay. And then you open it up and you put it together like this and staple it. And it becomes a little, I call it a desk. And the students can't see each other's cards, and they don't have to have the motor skills to hold them. Oh, look at, oh, that. look at that. That's a really good idea. And then you play your go, your go frog game, is what we'll say. Very good. <laughs> go frog. So thank you for Google making Builder was so overdue. Like, it was so overdue. We, should, <laughs> we tried years ago, and it was, not, it was not doable. We finally figured out a way to make it. Is it easy enough? Can you, like, do it? Oh, yeah, easy. Awesome. It's yeah, that's easy. Make I think I spent maybe a half hour, 45 minutes on this, which is yeah. longer than most things that I spend on for lesson picks. But I was really trying to pick different concepts. So it took me a while to kind of think of the ideas and then see what was there as well. Um, I, I will share this on the sharing on the center. Page. Yeah, we always get requests for uh, for links to the shared stuff. So sure. I'm sure I, will, you do. I will share that for sure. Perfect. Um, that's awesome. Let's see before I go. How much time do I have? Now you can go ahead and show us something else. We got time. So before I go into some behavior things, I can show you another plan that I have for June because we go to school all the way till June 15th, yuck. Um, I am going to take, if you can see on the, the board, this is, I made this in Symbol Share, or Symbol Builder, sorry, yeah. um, with the different ocean, and I'm gonna print different ocean pictures, and we're gonna, I'm gonna print it on my poster maker at school, and we are going to take that and blow it up and then the kids are going to have to follow directions to put different vocabulary in the picture so it's going to be really big so i'm excited to do that gotcha maker i did something similar in december i always do gingerbread men in december and i made a gingerbread man um i made a house out of like the big poster paper and then i blew up some of your symbols and we decorated the gingerbread house and followed directions so that was really cool that was you can see that here with one of the little candies that we made gotcha Okay, and then the gumdrops too. And so you're, you're just going to use like a one-page picture to, or export it as a PDF, blow it up, and blow print. Up. Yep, I can print from. We can print from like Microsoft Word or PowerPoint. So I'll probably just do that. Yeah, that'll work too. I will tell you, if you export it as a PDF, it'll come out crystal clear. It won't. Oh. It won't scale. And if you copy it into PowerPoint, it'll eventually grain up. But uh, that's the PowerPoint problem. We can't fix that. But um, yeah, if you export it as a PDF, it will print full size as big as you want. Perfect. Sounds yep. good. I'll let you know how that turns out. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now you're going to show some behavior stuff, right? Yes. So I use, I use um, lesson picks for a lot of behavior things. And what I love about it is um, a lot of the times I can have my material done by the time the meeting is over or five minutes after the meeting is over because I sit and listen to what we need in that specific time period and I'm typing on my computer. I keep my computer with me all the time. So a lot of times it's done by the end of the meeting. And I don't have to leave with hours of work, which is really, really nice. Yeah, absolutely. It's great. Okay. Wonderful. All right. So <laughs> here I use this for a kindergartner. Um, who was not speaking to her teacher and she was only speaking to her peers and we used this and this is the I will stay on topic template but I changed it into I will talk in class and this awesome kindergarten teacher would um, circle a smile every time she talked and if she talked three times to her teacher that day then she got to pick a sticker that's so we awesome used the behavior chart so this was really awesome yeah that's great Okay, and then I'm going to share my screen for the rest of it because I don't have it printed, but I have it on my computer. That template that she just showed is called Stay on Topic. Right. And I just, I love, like a lot of these templates were designed for one purpose, and I love to see how people use them for different yeah, purposes. Yeah, and you know, the, the fact that we can let you change that text yeah. really makes it versatile because you can, it doesn't have to say Stay on Topic. It can say whatever you I need it to. I will talk in class. Yeah, it's great. Or, or I won't. Or I won't <laughs> talk in class. No, I won't talk inappropriately <laughs> oh, we can say up this way okay and can you see my screen yes, yes. ma'am you look okay. great so this is a mountain we have a student who was struggling another kindergartner just by chance um and so we compared it to like you know he was climbing a mountain so we sent this picture home actually and he's keeping track with stickers to go up and down the mountain and then we're providing this for him when he goes home. So all the things that he did awesome that day, we write on the little chart. And this is the speech and language, or the, the speech therapy schedule. 
template, but we made it I'm awesome when, and then the teachers write something in the little boxes, and then they go home to mom as like little slips, and then he gets to move up his mountain at home. Very so cool. From home and school. That's very cool. Thank you. <laughs> I, mean, I know we're just feeding your ego. <laughs> I, I will tell you that people on Facebook think you're awesome too. It's not. Oh, you. thanks. Um, this is my five point scale. And I use this in the school that I teach in has an Asperger's program. So I know we don't use the word Asperger's, but we still use the word Asperger's. So whatever, <laughs> everyone can have their opinion. Um, but we use, I use these in all of those with all of those students and they get to rate different we do it a different way. We use it in therapy to rate different scenarios and how other people might feel. And we use it to rate how we feel in certain scenarios as well. So um, I really like this template as well. Do you laminate that and use like dry erase to write stuff in? I can't, yes, sometimes. And I laminate it and post it in every room on their um, board. Gotcha. And you chose colors that are, are mild enough that you can uh, write on it and still read because the, the bright ones wouldn't show through real well, right? Right. Right. Sorry, the geek in me saw that. Her, hu <laughs> her husband would have seen that. That's true. Yeah. He probably would have said, oh, there's a little purple in your red, too, which I never know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Um, this is another schedule that we use. First, unpack, then rocking chair. So we have a little guy who won't unpack in the morning, and the only thing he likes to do is rock in the rocking chair. So we made it an incentive for him to rock in the rocking chair if he can complete this checklist ahead of time. So we created this in lesson picks too. This is another one that I had done, you know, by the time our little meeting was over, I printed it and the teacher left with it. We didn't have to wait three days to get it started or anything. So yeah, that's, that's great. Best. That's the best. That's wonderful. Yep. That's Absolutely. Best. You could do a clothespin on the side of that and mm -hmm. put it down or any token along the side. You could use the I'm working for template. It's, it's yeah. good. That's true. That too. They're all great, right? Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, that is a visual schedule with the checklist template, mm -hmm. right? Vertical checklist, or is it just checklist? Just checklist checklist schedule. template. Checklist schedule. Fair yeah. enough. All right. And then a plug for your um, using the core vocabulary. And uh -huh. I can use, and I sorry, I'm drawing a blank on what it's called, but you can put the pictures in the boards. And this is for a go top 20. Oh, that's the... Um, Oh, now you're going to have me do it. The, uh, the layout, it's called grid layout feature. Grid layout, thank you. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I, I made it. I can't remember the name. So. <laughs> and this is for 25. Yeah. So what I like about this actually is that I can save the student's pictures because we're just building his core board. So I save the student's pictures under the um, tray where you can save the pictures. And then as I add a new one, I just pull up his tray and then can add more pictures. So I first, I only started with I and then um, your turn and put, and now we just add it on and in. So before his session, I just pull it up, click it in and print it out, which is really nice. And we have a limitation that's probably bothering you and we'll work on it, which is that when you bring it back up, they're all at the top again and you have to move them, right? Yes, that is annoying. Sorry. <laughs> we're, we're aware. We're working on it. There, there's actually some... There are some reasons why that's taking longer than it should. Okay. Well, that would be a nice upgrade, and I don't have to look at my old board to figure out where they go. Yeah, no, it's all good. Okay. And then one thing that's kind of out of order, this is my last point, is puppets. I can't tell you how much I love the puppets. So I made these puppets probably, again, right first when Lesson Picks came out. I made different puppets um, with people, and I used them for pronouns. So I cut all of these people out. And I put them on a ring and then I just keep them in one of my little colored coded drawers. And if someone's working on pronouns, I just pull it out. I don't have to go hunt pictures every time. And then they're all there and we can talk about, you know, she, he, they, them, him, all of this wonderful pronouns. Very cool. <laughs> so I like that because it's always right there and I don't have to worry about, you know, finding other pictures. Yeah, that's great. Have your people ready. Absolutely. You know, we, sh we should make a full page. There is a puppet. full page puppet. There is a full page there puppet? There is okay. a full page, and then there's two per page, and there's finger puppets in development. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Maybe next week. <laughs> they're tougher because they're really tiny on little kids' fingers. So why is that but tough? It's, it's just tougher than it looks. You can make this up my no, next it's, week. It's already, next already week. made. Already done. All right, next week. There you go. Now we have something to announce. Awesome. Well, that's awesome. You did wonderful. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. And everybody, I'm going to go check and see if there are any questions for you. But everybody, everybody says, 
authentic learning opportunities for students every day, so many individual learning ideas. Uh, yes, she is awesome, amazing resources. That's from Ashley, maybe you know her. Oh, thank you, Ashley. And so, and um, somebody else says, uh, thank you for presenting. And Marcy says, you're right, she is good. So, oh, thanks, Marcy. So, so thank you. Um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and show um, some of the stuff you brought. Okay. And by the way, for those of you who watch, are watching, um, and Diana, you can vouch for this. We don't go searching for people. We look for people who like it and talk yeah. about it, right? All yes. she did was say, oh, I love this. I'm like, well, you want to be on it? And she said, <laughs> <I'm> sure. <laughs> sure. Um, but it's not scary, is it? No, not at all. Uh, it's nice and easy, and the software is easy to use. And you guys are very nice. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I don't think people realize how valuable just the little ideas are. Oh, yeah. the, huge. the file folder, cutting it in half. Yeah. I didn't know where you, I thought you were going to show thing. file folder games like everybody. I'm like, oh, that's totally different. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. It's the little things that make our day, you know? Yep. Awesome. Yeah. So, cool. Cool. All right. What else are we going to show cool. here? Oh, wait. Awesome. Before we go, before you go, uh, I'm going to share my screen for a second and I want to show something. Okay. Um, while Diana is with us. So, Diana, you, you and I were talking about not being able to remember. You can see my screen, right? Mm hmm. All right, we were talking about not being able to remember the name of that tool. So what, what she's using there is called the grid layout tool. And I thought maybe some people haven't seen it, might be worth showing. Okay. Uh, if you click, if you have things in your tray and you click create materials, okay. uh, lots of the templates create a grid, right? Picture cards, um, all the AAC devices, like the, the uh, Super Talker and the Quick Talker, all of these layouts form a, a, a grid, a row and column grid. And anytime you do use one of these, you'll end up seeing on the third page this, this button right here that says grid layout. So if you hit grid layout, it will actually pop open, show you the layout for whatever template you're using. Uh, and in this case, I'm using a, four, a Quick Talker 4. I can move things around real easily. I can even paint things if I wanna make you know, all the nouns green, all right, whatever it is. These are all nouns, it's not a good core board at all. Um, but I'm not a speech path, uh, and, and this had something to do with the old lady who swallowed a violin or something. F followed a, swallowed a fiddle, right? Uh, it, I think it's a, a clover. A clover. A clover. Shamrock, yeah. All yeah. right, whatever. But path. this is this is the tool that she was using. If I had chosen a different different drop down like the Quick Talker 23, you'll see that it will actually show that grid instead, and you can move things around. <laughs> and this prints a PDF. So yeah. even some of these AAC templates work well just as like a communication yeah, board. Yeah, absolutely. Like she was using yeah. So here, you know, the next the next step here, we'll actually make this. You were using it as a manual pointing board, right? You're not using that in a device, are you? Right. Yeah. yeah. So there's a that's what it will create, and you can use it for that. Um, if you just want to make picture cards, obviously uh, your your picture card template also creates a grid, and you'll also have that option there. Right, so it'll automatically find the right size, let you arrange them and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I just thought you know, we mentioned it, and I had, I had kind of lost the name there for a second too. So I thought, hey, you know, we might as well show people that. Nice. All right. Great. All right. So what are you, Lori? What are you showing us today? Oh, I've got some fun things. All right. <laughs> All right. So don't go away, Diana. But if you can turn your uh, camera off, that'd be great. Okay. Thank you. All right. What are we showing? Well, I think you previewed these already. Okay. Um, this is a new template called Traditional Playing Cards. Traditional Playing Cards. Traditional Playing Cards. Um, highly requested template to be out there. Just a single picture Would per you like card. Me to show it over, over in the overhead. Absolutely. Go All ahead. Right. I'll go ahead and take off the Let's see. clip. All right. So, Ankylosaurus. These are dinosaurs. These are dinosaurs. Just dinosaurs. It's, it's important that we know our dinosaurs. But look, they're the entire sets here. Yep. Right. So the ace, very nice. The ace is the Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> just happened to fall that way. <laughs> Got lucky. Yeah. And you'll and they, they'll match suit by suit. So all the aces will be the same. Uh, they'll start over if they need to, but mm -hmm. they will be. Um, they'll all be. Uh, they'll repeat every thirteen or multiple of thirteen things. Right. Yep. So you've got the fossils and things, and you just put them in the tray, and then chose. Let, let's show how you do that. Let's show how you make them. Uh, you. We need 13 things. That's so, okay. I, well, let's pick some animals. It's easy. Okay. Whoops. Yes. How about we'll pick some animals? Sure. Fictional animals? We have 13 of these? Sure. 
Look, we can do dragons. Dragons like tacos. Dinos, di they right? love tacos. Elves and fairies and uh, genies and goblins and... Uh, A mermaid. Male unicorn. Uh, an ogre and... Um, no mermaid? No oh, mermaid? You already got a mermaid, sorry. No, I don't. Oh. That's a genie. Oh. Where's the mermaid? Right here. Oh, thank you. Right There's here. a mermaid. And uh, a thing, a uh, wolf, and uh, a sloth is not an imaginary creature. It's in the wrong category it's in the wrong, there. Uh, this monster here. And uh, one more. All right, I'm talking B, just for fun. We hit create materials, and here we're going to search for... Can we search for cards? We can search for cards. C-A-R-D-S. There's a lot of cards. Oh, my goodness. Yes, there are. What about playing cards? Okay. You'll notice now we have two. I see. We have two playing cards. Right? So now we have... And these, these poor people can't see us very well. It's okay. <laughs> now we can choose our old playing cards, which is more the Uno-style playing cards. Or we can do traditional playing cards, which are ace through king of whatever suits you want. And you hit next. Uh, we have dragons, dinosaur princesses, elves, fairies, etc. There's our vocabulary. Right, we can translate them to another language, but we won't. And we'll call these um, uh, imaginary as the title. I want clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. I do want to show the words underneath, and we'll use a nice century gothic font. And hit finish, and that's it. Now it's gonna make a lot. It's gonna make four different sets, which is, it takes two pages each. So it's gonna make eight pages of materials, but they're nice and easy to download. And ignore that contract up there. And uh, so this is what they look like. So you get your clubs, your spades, your hearts, and your diamonds, and uh, they're all ready to go. There you and they go. look awesome. Somebody made awesome cards for these, <laughs> right? Easy, you happy with them? Easy, yes. Been requested yes. for a long time. Let's, uh, Let's kind of show these up here again. Been requested a long time uh, and finally kind of got these out and working. Um, and they look great. I printed these on cardstock, yep. but a lot of times what I would do is look for the cardstock that has a pattern on the back. Yeah, um, that's that way a good you idea. can't see right. through can't the see card. Through. Although you can't quite see delight. through these. I can't see through these. These are pretty good. Yep. But yeah, so they make they make the cardstock that you buy at uh, Joanne and uh, Michaels, Michaels that and has the pattern on the back. Scrapbooking section. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's pretty cool. You got any any other stuff to show? Well, you While already kind of showed the playing cards, which are cards we already had. So we talked about playing cards. Comparing. I see you were back up on the screen yeah. again. You gotta. I gotta tell you. <laughs> so pay attention. There you go. It's not my fault. So, All right. So we've got. Uh, let's is, go here. We'll, it, we'll go back this way. This is in a different template. So this is the the regular playing cards, right? We've had for a long time. Had comes for a long time. Many different styles. <laughs> yep. Um, these are the same dinosaur cards, but now we can play memory or Uno. And we've got uh, ten different Old colors. Day. We can do black and white and red and green, yellow, blue, brown, pink, purple. Purple. Yeah, uh, so if you need lots of different uh, styles, maybe uh, for whatever game you're trying to play, you can do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, those well, that are brings great. me back to this game, which is an interesting game. Uh, go ahead and so put one of each. Put one color. of each color. So these were made with. Oh, pictures. these are great! I know these. So these are made with Look pictures in your tray, and we did one color at a time, then had to find a different set of pictures. The I idea with this game it. is when you draw a red card, uh -huh. it's going to tell you something to do. Can you do it? Can you do it? Then you got to. Do that. Walk backwards, hop, skip, crawl, wow. whatever movement you want to do. Then we have the location as green cards to the sink, to the door, to the refrigerator, um, to your desk. Things then, you usually find in a classroom, maybe? Yep. And then the blue cards show something that they carry or um, maybe even a body part. Like with, if, or what they're while wearing. Yeah. While wearing a shirt. Or a lot of times what we'll do is we'll say um, putting the a toy on your head or holding it on gotcha. your elbow. So, so some, some style is the last one. So yep. this is the action, this is the location, and this is the style or something like that. So you can say, can you duck walk to the door while wearing a skirt? That's I, right. I can. You can. I huh? can. You I, are I'll, quite talented. I, I, I will prove it. Right, so <laughs> I'll wear a purse, not a skirt. How about that? It will be easier to duck walk <laughs> with a purse. Than, than so, but these, these are great. And these are... Um, 
you know, these are all different. Can you skip to the chair? But I get to pick purse. the color of my deck on these playing cards. And so right. therefore I right. can use the colors for multiple purposes. And you, you'll know what, which is which. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. To help identify your decks. Correct. That's, that's pretty awesome. So that's another fun way to play playing cards. All right. This is why everybody wants to be in Lori's classroom, by uh, the way. Always. All right. What's this last one here? The last set of playing cards is actually a game we have, a third template called I Have Who Has. I Have Who Has. This is a great game. And these are L, three syllable words. Gotcha. Um, in our, found in our sound finder, beginning wow. L words. And this you would use more in a small group activity. So if you had eight students in your small group, you probably want to make eight cards. Choose eight pictures. The students read their cards. Again, practicing the target vocabulary or articulation words. Mm -hmm. And they ask questions. So it has, adds that level of social communication as well. So, for example, if you have a card, and then your card may say, I have what? library. Who has lollipop? And then we look around to see. Somebody says, look, I have lollipop. Who has laundromat? There you go. And then we go to lumberjack, lasagna, lady liberty. And that has a, a photograph. Card. We're missing uh, a card. Yeah, they printed out a second page. Gotcha. And then bring the That's all good. Page. But they will cycle around so that you have one of each, and it does that for you. And it'll bring you right back to the first person. Right, so you can make a whole yeah. deck real easily. Very easily. And actually, this is a lot of people use I have who has, but it's not usually this easy to, um, to make. To make them, yeah. And you can even make your own layout as well. But the way you have it, the standard layout, they just recycle and bring you back yep. to the beginning. Very cool. So Let's old check. game I learned in college uh, many Got many much more years popular. Ago. And yeah, it's now everywhere. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Yeah. All right. Time. So we have, uh, let me check and see if we have any questions. Okay. And then I might, I might share the, your woodwork from this weekend, just for fun, <laughs> just, just to see. Well, check your questions. <laughs> Let's see, we've got, <coughs> sorry, I'm still trying to kick this thing. Uh, Cheryl loves Diana. Uh, Sheila's happy. Oh, uh, let's see. Everybody's happy. She, she rocked. She did. She, she did. Really that's did. that's why we uh, that's why we invited her. We knew she was going to be great. Yeah. All right. All right. Before you go on to your dice that you oh, wanted to okay. show, your dice. Um, we do have themed mats that are new. Okay. As well, these are additions to current templates. Yes. They're so. already in there, but now we have new styles of okay. the themed learning mats. We have a nest. So if you have your egg words or your N words, yep. you can pick it's how many right? eggs you want in there. You could do just one egg in your nest. Up to 10 or something. I think up to 10. Yeah. All right. And a shell. Seashells. That way. Hard work in cool. there. Cool. words, a shell. And, and lollipops. There's the lollipops. The popsicles. We got a request today on this. For popsicles? Oh, for another one. Fishing net. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I know. I figured I'd tell you. It's never ending, guys. You know, yeah. it never ends. We have ends. fish. We have fish. So you could go fishing, put a little paper clip on them. Yeah, absolutely. So these nice. are neat if you can't here. Let's put it on this way so they can see them better real quick. If I can get my mouse to work. All right, so this is what the lollipops look like. And uh, let's see, lollipops and the nest. Popsicles. Popsicles. Oh, popsicles. What was that called? Lollipops? Lollipops. That's not what they are. And there's the eggs. Those are pretty cool. These are what these are, are these? all egg words. Egg words. Beg, Nutmeg, leg, leggings, pregnant, megaphone. Lego. Very cool. Egg words. Okay. Very cool. All right. We're good? We're good. I'm sorry about that noise. I didn't realize it was gonna be that loud. <laughs> so last but not least. Show us what you have now. What are these? <laughs> this isn't this isn't me. This is all you, babe. Well, this is not lesson picks. Is it? Well, it is. So this is showcasing the fact that Lesson Picks lets you export our symbols. Gotcha. And because you can export our symbols, you can export them as SVG files, which will import into a 3D printer, which can print wood now, which is just so cool. It is. What game are you showing? So I this, see a lizard, a rock, rock scissors, paper. Rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. Or Spock. Spock. That sounds there like you a go. Big Bang game. This is a Big Bang Theory game. And if you got kids who are really into Big game, Big Bang Theory, this would be a big thing. And so th this weekend, Lori actually um, took the wood ones home and distressed them and made them all pretty and added stain and rubbed them and 
made them. I like this one. This one's pretty cool. We're going to keep playing with these. Yeah. Well, it's hard not to play yeah. with these. And I actually, this is the one I did last week, and I like it too. It doesn't look as good as yours, but I still like it. So they, they turned out kind of cool. Um, so don't forget that if you have any tools that take symbols, that take, that take any kind of image, you can always use our, our, our images, and it's legal. We you encourage want to show them people. how to export into, because you talked earlier about exporting to PDF. S PDF and, and SDG. Like, I can show real quickly uh, before we go. Oh, we're only a little bit over. How they look, they're looking at themselves now. All right. So um, if you have one of our pictures and you want to use it in another tool, like let's say, for example, you wanted to use uh, Dragon, <coughs> you can always come in here uh, to our Dragon picture. And you'll notice that you have several different variations. Mm -hmm. In our case, we wanted the black and white one. Oh, it's your, they're not seeing it yet. I'm sorry. Hold on. <laughs> sorry. Now you can see it. So if you're looking at a dragon, um, you have the variations down the side. Uh -huh. And in our case, we wanted the black and white one because we were going to etch it. Okay. Okay. And yes, they can still see you. Gotcha. Right. All righty. I see that. So, um, so we were going to use the black and white one to etch it into the 3D printing tool. And that takes SVG files, the standard vector uh, graphics, right. scalable vector graphics. Um, so there's actually an SVG and you just hit export. And it exports that file, and now you can import that into your tool. You if can you, do the same with PDF? Absolutely. If you did it with PDF, you can actually tell it what size you want, export the image, and it will give you a PDF file, mm -hmm. which looks just like that. Very nice. Right? What's the difference between uh, the JPEG, though, and uh, the PDF? All right. So the PDF and the SVG are scalable. What that means is that no matter how far you zoom in, this will never turn into blocks. It'll never turn grainy. So that's true on both uh, PDF and S SVG files. So you can look at their teeth, they'll never turn grainy. That's true with all of them, all of our pictures, no matter what. Uh, some of the Unity symbols aren't, and anything you upload yourself isn't. But any of our symbols, anything you drew, <coughs> you know this, is scalable. Uh, the other options you have are SVGs, also scalable. But PNG and JPEG aren't. So if you choose like a 600 by 600 PNG file, which is portable network graphic, and it's the standard that works with everything. It's probably what I would recommend uh, if you're exporting pictures. I like it because it supports the transparent background, so I can put it on colored backgrounds in yeah. PNG. Yep. The JPEG puts a white box behind it. Correct. So I'm going to try and show you. It's Unfortunately, it's black on black. Let me do a different one uh, to show you this. So I'll, I'll export this one as a PNG, and you'll see. I see that one has a pattern. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll fix that one later. <laughs> so you, you'll look here, if you look carefully on his wings, it will turn into blocks, right? So as you zoom in, that's as far as it'll let you go, zoom in. But hopefully you guys can see that um, it, starts, get it starts getting blurry, right? And it will get very blurry eventually. Um, the the uh, JPEG has the same problem, and it has a black background. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> there's no way around that. JPEG works well with photos, though. It does. JPEG uh, is the smallest file format, and it is the only one that really scales well with photos. Gotcha. So that's why we have these particular uh, exports. Uh, last way to export is you can always right-click and say copy image. Most systems will accept that as, mm -hmm. as pasting into Word and things like that. So that's, that's just worth showing. Uh, what I actually use is a tool called Fusion 360, and I'm not going to show you guys how to use Fusion 360, but I made a video for AT Makers that shows awesome. exactly how to do this. And I will put that link in the bottom of this when we finish our show. Okay, so they can So if you're use. a geek or if you wanna share it with your, your robotics team, and or, or if you wanna be a geek and you have a 3D printer, you could, uh, you'll be able to do it. All right, you could add images to you can You can absolutely make 3D printed dice that have less than six pictures on them. Very cool. Very cool. All right, Diane, are you still with us? Yes. Cool. You want to come back for a second and say goodbye? <laughs> Are, is there now a child in the house screaming? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're <here> soon. <laughs> She's coming back. She like keeps popping up and then going All away. Right. And yeah. Yeah. There we go. Hey, there you are. Well, listen, I want to thank you for coming. We have, um, we have gifts for all of our guests. Oh, um, nice. We have gift certificates from Stacy Sensory Solution, which is awesome. Um, augmentative resources and cough drop AAC. So if you'd like a cough drop license or if you need Velcro stuff from augmentative resources or 
Uh, Stacy's is awesome. If you've got any kids on the spectrum who need like weighted vests and we do, that would be awesome. Toys, I will make sure that we get you a, a gift certificate. Thank you for those of you listening and watching. It's we don't. It's not the reason you come on here. You come on here because you're awesome. But we do like <laughs> to reward people who uh, give us their time. Thank you. So, yeah, you're welcome. And thank you so much for being here. It's the least we can do to say thank right. you for uh, it's, all the things you've taught us about how you use lesson picks. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so, so great job. Thank you so much. Um, if you want to come back, let us know. And uh, we got to show different stuff. Anytime. Can't, can't show the same stuff. I don't think she's short on ideas. She's not going to run out because I think we gave her an hour to come up with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you great. nailed it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sam. All right. Well, thank you guys and uh, Lori. Um, I think we, there's the dog. There's the dog. <laughs> so, um, for those of you who are watching, thanks for joining us. We're going to do this once a week. If you'd like to join us, uh, reach out to us at either support at lessonpicks.com or anywhere on the Facebook page. We will get it. Either Eileen or Lori or I will get it, or Eric. We'll all funnel you to the same place and we'll get it set up. And Diana, it's not too scary, is it? No, not at all. No, it's all, all painless. <laughs> Guys are very nice. Makes me <laughs> Thanks. All right. She got, to, she got to see me before I was all cleaned up. It was awful. So uh, Grinch. I was wearing my Grinch shirt. So um, well, listen, everybody, thank you. And we'll see you next. Are we here on Monday next week? We are. Yeah, I think Monday next week we'll be here again. Mm -hmm. so we'll see you then. Yay. Bye, everybody. Thank you.